Are you ready? I've been ready. Don't give me any of your crap. Come on, we're wasting people's time. Hi there. Thanks for diving into Two Peas, Same Pod, the humorous podcast of family unity that proves we're all in this comedic roller coaster of life together. Here are your hosts, the father and daughter duo, Eric and Tova Weinstein. Welcome to Two Peas, Same Pod Podcast. Uh, it's right. a pun on podcast if you guys haven't figured that out yet. I was going to use that as a name, two peas, same pod, hyphen cast. But podcast? You, but you put the kibosh on that. You were going to name it two peas, same podcast, podcast? No, just two peas, same pod, hyphen cast. So it would read like two peas, same podcast. And then it would have been two peas, same pod. Cast podcast. Yeah, I suppose you would have yeah, to. Yeah, no, copy kibosh. Me. Yeah, no wonder I kibosh. Them. Okay, you put the kibosh on that, so we're just two peas, same pod. Welcome Cast. back. <laughs> okay, welcome back. Thanks. I, I didn't go anywhere. No, apparently not, because we're actually recording back to back episodes. Don't, don't let them know our strategy, strategy or well, what's going on. Well, we haven't done that here. before because we missed an episode. We missed a week. Yeah, because he was sick. Yeah, oh. little stuffy nose, my ass. He was testing like every day for COVID, and he was like praying to the gods he had it. So he had. Why some... would I pray to God? So you had some excuse to be lying on your ass. Okay, really? <laughs> I think anybody listening to this who actually knows me, a knows I don't want to get sick. B knows that I'm not lying on my ass, and C knows that I definitely don't want COVID again. I've already had it once, but I was testing every day so I wouldn't get anybody else in our yeah, house sick. Yeah, you, your mother, or the dog. Franklin cannot get sick. Well, I don't know. He could get sick. He sometimes has a cold. I hear him sneezing. His nose is running. Yeah, he goes. <clears throat> yeah, he's got a weak. Well, sometimes he sneezes on purpose yeah, to, to get, get our attention to get him more food. He's so rude. He is rude. He'll like tap. He'll literally tap you and yeah. then just sit there and look at you He's and then ruthless. he'll sneeze yeah oh, and yeah. he'll just sneeze and then he'll go mm. he'll give a little whining that's what gets me i'm like franklin don't cry don't cry you whiny little oh so you can call him a whiny little bitch but when i do it you and mom are like Tove. i never call him that that is your brother and when i call that's him your brother <laughs> when i call him oh, you imbecile and you, your guys are like, well, that's not nice. You're insulting Exa him. Exactly. That's exactly what they say. And I go, he doesn't understand me. He doesn't understand me. He understands. He knows you're He right. understands what I say, Franklin. Okay, let's move on here. So uh, last week we talked about the Grammys, and uh, then we had not talked about the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the Super Bowl a little bit. So uh, I don't really care so much about the Travis, Kelsey, and uh, Taylor Swift thing. Okay. They only showed her for under a minute total over the entirety of the— Ugh, you're reading those articles— yeah, but I don't really care. Like, it didn't bother me that she was there, and it didn't. It wouldn't have bothered me if she wasn't there. Blake Lively looked like she belonged in the 80s. What was up with that? I don't know. She looked all right, I mm. thought. And, uh, Ice Spice. I cannot believe Ice Spice is part of the posse with Taylor. Jason Kelsey saying hi to Ice Spice. That was not on my 2024 bingo card. I don't. Why not? Those two? You would have You would have pinned the meeting? He would, he introduced himself to Ice Spice. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Like I can't see the two of them connecting. Mm -hmm. Just but you know you couldn't see Ben Affleck and Ice Spice connecting either. But they did on those Duncan commercials. I don't like Ben Affleck. I don't think. Oh, no, I like him. Something about him pissed I, me off. Okay. He might be my Will Ferrell. Really, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I I actually like Ben Affleck. I, I liked him in the. He was in the town, right? Yes. Yeah, he, I he, liked him in he that. He directed the town as well. He directed it. Yeah. He's a good director. He won. Uh, He's with J-Lo, right? Yes. Again. So get this on the This is the second the time floor. around. This second time around? Yeah. But now they're actually married. Before they were just dating. Wasn't she a host in American Idol? No. Was she? I don't remember her. You're thinking she was she on one of the other shows maybe? The X Factor maybe? I, I, I don't know. We don't watch them anymore. Well, but the... who was after Paula Abdul? We love the OGs. Randy, Simon, and Paula. Yeah. We're big OG fans. Ryan yeah. Seacrest out. Well, we just saw. We'll be uh, right back after this commercial break. We just saw uh, Randy on Name That Tune. Randy's still relevant. Who he, would have thought? He's keeping himself relevant. He yeah. looks like a skeleton. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. I hope he's not sick. Well, I don't know how he stayed relevant because remember when he was in that iCarly episode? No, I don't remember that. The principal of Carly's school mm. had like a shrine to Randy Jackson, like in her like closet. 
and like Carly, I think they like snuck in our house and they turned on the lights and it's just a Randy Dra- Jackson shrine. That's weird. Yeah, it was really weird. He used to be in Journey, the rock group Journey. Don't stop believing. Oh. Okay, Steve Perry. Is that Journey? Yeah. I'm so good. Name that mother tune. <laughs> yeah, so we watched the Super Bowl, uh, just me and your mom at home with the dog. Oh, wait. Verizon. I wrote some notes about the commercials. Um, I was pissed off. I'm delusional as always thinking Justin Bieber was going to come out. Apparently he was supposed to come out. Are you a Bieber fan? I love Justin Bieber. I, I didn't know this. Ever since I saw the Never Say Never movie, I love Justin Bieber. I thought you were a Haley Bieber fan. No, I hate Haley Bieber. She can't, she can't get hit by a bus fast enough. That's nice. I don't know where you get this stuff. Yeah, my one-liners... Anyway, so I told everyone at work he was going to perform. I told all the customers. Everyone's like, oh, maybe I'll turn it on. Like, yeah. I was like, he hasn't performed in so long. Like, Justin Bieber's coming Isn't he out. sick or something? Doesn't he have an illness of some he sort? He has Lyme disease or something. So do you. Yeah, I know. Once you have Lyme disease, you always have Lyme. People are so dramatic. Like, I live with Lyme. I live with Lyme. I live with being roofied. I live with... Live with lemon. I live with poison ivy, and oh. I had to take prednisone for that. And oh, my yeah. foot was like twenty times its size with pus. And, you were like, oh. oh yeah, you were like. Uh, I wish we could insert a picture. John Merrick, the Elephant Man. I should have got a worker's compensation for that. It did happen at your job. Yes, but so the halftime show was okay. I thought it was pretty good. I think he's a good performer. Like he's very energetic. He's a good dancer. Yeah, he's he's very physically fit because yeah. what he was doing on stage required a lot mm-hmm. of of energy and a lot of physical fitness. I just thought that it was long. It was one of the longest. Luda, Luda in the yeah, house. Yeah, Luda was in the house, and so was uh, who else? Um, crap, not C-Lo. Oh, Alicia Keys. Yeah, Why cover you... Franklin's eyes. That was a little uh, PG thirteen. Oh, well, they're he... both married. Well, he apparently got engaged. married earlier yeah. that day. No, I think it was after his performance. Oh, really? He got engaged, and then would well, they run over quickly to one of those wedding chapels? I in think Vegas? so in Vegas. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good place. Gamble away, and then make your bets, and then go to the game. Yeah, Aunt Michelle went there for a honeymoon. She went to Vegas. Whose idea was that? I have no idea. But was she, it Dan's? She and Dan, Dan went to Vegas for their honeymoon. <laughs> then they went up to the Hoover Dam, which is a big tourist attraction as well. But yeah, they went to Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. That was terrible. I was embarrassed for Taylor Swift in that moment. Okay. But yeah, so after Usher finished, you text me, Who, who's that chick on the guitar? Miss Westy. Yeah, I don't know who that is. No, I texted you, Miss Westy, your bestie, and you were like, of oh. course, but it that, it's not Miss oh. West. Miss West East Northwest. Kim oh, Kardashian. Geez. But I don't know who the hell that was. But a lot of people thought it was Northwest. A lot of was people, that H-E-R? Oh, I don't know. Okay. But people thought they're short. Ball man was CeeLo Green. Yeah, it wasn't CeeLo Green. Do you see was... Will I Am, William? Yeah, I saw William. And then people thought William was Kanye. Apparently Taylor Swift had Kanye removed from the Super Bowl. I don't know how that... I don't know if that's accurate. I hadn't heard that, but I'd be impressed if she wields that kind of power. You know Jackson Mahomes? I don't, but we've talked about him. That tool bag. You they talked were... about him in last week's episode. Oh, yeah. I think towards the, towards the end. Yeah. Um, I think, um, no, not that I think, Brittany Mahomes, she's terrible, too. You that's know his Brittany. wife. That's no, that's Patrick's wife. I mean, that's Patrick's wife, who's in, I think, the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Yeah, she is. Ugh, terrible, terrible personality. It makes her ugly inside and out. You know um, what they say, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly goes straight to the bone. Ugly is her. Look that word up in the dictionary. Picture her. Well, I don't think so. Whatever. I feel very strongly about her, Tom Brady, a lot of people. So I don't know where you get that from. And so there's a video of Jackson Mahomes at the club like trying to get into Brittany Mahomes like VIP section. And she's like shaking her head no, and the security is like... Her brother-in-law? She wouldn't let her brother-in-law in? Mm-hmm. Nice. But I, I don't like either of them. I... I don't like Jackson more because he's like a pedo. Yeah, we've talked about that. But I don't know. I just thought it was funny that Brittany Mahomes did that. But so after Usher performed, Verizon said they had a big announcement. And I thought maybe they were going to bring Justin Bieber out. But no, it's just Beyonce announcing her country album. To which I could not care less. And I hold him. Okay. To which. Sorry. That was a total underuse of Tony Hale, yeah. who is a fantastic comedic actor. Mm-hmm. 
And that was such an underwhelming, excessively long, yeah. like mental gymnastics I had to do to understand what they were trying to get why at. Why did they until... have a preview? Ugh, I don't Verizon, know. Verizon, like, like, why did they need a preview for that? Beyonce's pastor prime, like we said. Yeah, I'm, what I'm, about I'm, I'm, like a good neighbor? Yes. Like a good neighbor. Uh, yes. And then the time where. <laughs> Like a good neighbor with the sheep. The sheep, yeah, that was, that was funny. funny. I actually was one of the few people that thought the Jennifer Aniston, David Schwimmer I, thing was kind of The cute. Uber Eats one? Again, a big leap. You had to do a little mental gymnastics to get from, you know, the Uber Eats point to the joke. But yeah. I thought, you know, mm. it, it was it was cute. I'm trying I to think. I think it could have had better execution with more of the cast. Like, I think if they had the Friends cast throughout the commercial instead of whoever else was in it, I think that would have well, they been had better. Your buddy Jelly Roll was in that commercial. Yeah, who else is in that? Who else was in uh, that there one? There was a lot of people in that commercial. What else? There were a couple of commercials that were pretty good. Well, you like Dunkings. I, I thought the Dunkings commercial was funny because why did they have to bring out Tom Brady? Like why? Why did they have to ruin it? Oh, I thought that, that I thought that that was funny. Where he says Tommy B, Tommy B on the keys or something like that. But or how do you beats. like them apples? Well, that was the funniest line. Yeah. the way it was delivered. He's like, how do you like? Them donuts. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah. It's just the way you said it was very funny, and I thought I thought it was good. That was sort of an original thing, and, and finally, because we've seen all this buildup over these small mini commercials, they've been running for a month. Yeah, to see the, and then you can it's actually spicy. go online and see a full four and a half yeah, minute version said, of that, which is funny. My dad loved it. He sent the whole version. Yeah. Um, what about Christopher Walken's commercial? That, talking like Walken. That was good because it ta- it requires. A bit of skill to be able to do an impression yeah. of Christopher Walken because it's so unusual. He doesn't actually drive a BMW. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he drives a nicer car than that. No, there's nothing wrong with a BMW. I mean, I wouldn't drive one because it's not my style. But what about the pickle babies? Did you see that one? The pickle babies. No, it was like a pickleball commercial. I think it was. For... Oh, I did. Yeah, the, oh, for E Trade. Yeah, or something. Yes, yeah. And the E Trade the... commercials are usually kind of yeah. funny because they're always little kids or yeah, babies. Yeah, that, that one was funny, and they were playing pickle. That's ball right. and then yeah. and they were basically dogging them and you know, they, yeah they were like barely like swinging their paddle yeah. and then they pan over to the little kids and it says thanks for coming to our clinic like the yeah. first one's free like, yeah. something like that. that's what i mean like those are those are kind of funny but it was interesting to me that they had these movie commercials but you had to go look at you had to go, the apes. hold on but you had to go to a website to see the full preview of Wicked. the movie yeah, I saw the Wicked thing, the Ariana Grande. She looks sick, speaking of Randy. And uh, I did like the looks of the Planet of the Apes uh, movie. I think that's one of the first commercials that popped up. And it, I texted, it was early. Yeah. It was very early on, yeah. Um, I'm a big I'm, Planet of the Apes fan. I've seen we, all of them. We live near an old monkey factory. It's not a monkey factory. What is it? It is the New England Center for Primate Research. And its I don't think it's functional any longer, but it's in the middle of the woods about a mile from two miles from our house Mm -hmm. and i remember going by it as a little kid there used to be like gates and there's a security like there's a security gate and building right in the front and you could not go beyond it you can't go beyond it and uh, it was owned and operated by harvard i don't think it's operational any longer but we always used to joke when we watched the planet of the apes movies that that's really just happening up the street from us yeah seriously the entire country world is going to be taken over by apes that came from framingham that's like at UMass. They have like animals somewhere on campus. And my roommate Jonah, he like wrote his thesis paper and like tried to break in and like help the animals. Just like tried to see what they were doing. Really? Yeah. Something weird's going on at UMass. And you need like a specific badge and you card going on. I don't know. Um, but it, it's always weird to have this place near us in Framingham where yeah. God knows what's going on. I mean, I mean several years ago, I know there was what's some going news. On. Nick pointed out that multiple Super Bowl commercials were like pitches. Were pitch driven. Like what? Like the Sarah V one. Did you see that oh, one? Oh, yeah, well, Michael Sarah. But they're getting their panties into a twist, but they pulled this whole PR stunt how, like, Sarah V, Michael Sarah, like, they sent out PR to influencers with, like, literally duct tape around the box with Michael Sarah's face, and now they're getting all their panties in a twist because everyone's like, Michael Sarah, like, created, like, Sarah V, like, what does he know? And then they're like, no, like, Oh, like it's dermatology, blah, blah, blah. Nobody needs Piss twisted me off. panties. I know. Everyone has their panties and twisted. And I'm like, everyone's so dramatic. Did you see the Judge Beauty? 
This, oh, yeah, it, that's, yeah. That's not the first time I think I've seen that ad. I think I've seen it on TikTok. But I think it would be funnier if you like suits. Did you like suits? I was okay with suits. I stopped watching yeah. it. I've never watched it on like Netflix or whatever it's on. It's we watched on- it when it was on regular broadcast TV on USA. Okay, but, yeah. Because uh, Josh was into that very early. Josh loved shows like that. He loved like that, that USA stuff. He loved Burn Notice. He, he loved did. Psych. He, he liked, did. Monk. Did he like White Collar? Monk. Like, loved White Collar. Uh, what was the other one? There was one with, with Parker, not Parker Posey. With, did they say uh, Burn Notice? No, he didn't say Burn Notice. With uh, Jeffrey, what's his name from UMass? Jeffrey Donovan. I don't know who that is. The star of Burn Notice. Oh. Jeffrey Donovan. Okay. The star of Burn Notice is a UMass alum. That's a good show. We should really... Oh, Royal Pains is on USA. Royal Pains. Josh was ahead of the that's curve an, there. That's an underrated show. That show It totally so is. That, that show was so great. Good. Yeah, but so if you maybe watch Suits, you'd be in the, a little more into it. Suits has made a huge comeback because... Everyone... Everybody's watching it on Netflix. Not because of Megan, though. People don't really... No, but everybody's watching it on Netflix, and they've done a reboot, or they're bringing it back. Yeah, they've had a couple of reunions. What's a show that's coming back? Oh, they put something out recently that they said they were coming back, but I was like, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. A lot of shows when there's a big lag of time between broadcasts, like this Frasier reboot recently, oh, yeah. I did not appreciate it very much. Mom liked it, sort of. Uh, the, the Murphy, Mom likes cheesy shit like that. Murphy Brown, which came back a couple of years ago, again, not a great execution, uh, mostly because some people are dead and other people don't want to participate, but not a great execution of that show be- because some shows are a product of their time. Murphy Brown was a product of the late 80s, early 90s. A lot of their jokes were around the political situation of the time. Uh, and that doesn't translate necessarily to you know 25 years later. I also think that when Curb Your Enthusiasm took a hiatus of 10 years. That's coming back. You well, love it's on Larry. now. Yeah, but it took, a, it, it took a break for like 10 years, and when it came back, I, I kind of lost interest. They didn't have the same rhythm. Mm-hmm. Also, it was the same thing with Arrested Development. The first three seasons of Arrested Development. Is Jason Bateman in that one? Yes, yes, he's a star. The first three seasons back in the early 2000s. He's a star. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This was way before Modern Family and other shows uh, like that. yeah. Arrested Development, first three seasons, brilliant. But when they took 10 years off and they came back and they tried to do another few seasons, the rhythm was off. The whole thing was off. Not the same at all. Who's the guy with the chubby cheeks? Tony Hale from Veep and who was on that commercial with Beyonce. He's a star, one of the stars. Also, uh, Will Arnett. Will Arnett. Will Arnett. I don't like that. You know who he was married to? Don't say Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler. Were you going to say that? I was. Okay, because I was going to say... I'm I'm getting some Amy Poehler. I'm feeling Amy Poehler. Well, you felt it right because uh, they were married for a while. Okay, so back to the Super Bowl. All my bets lost. I like to do parlays because it just the odds are so much better. Like you get more money, and just like when something hits, you feel you feel happy. You feel like you won something, and you. No, that's how you they hook you on. Ga- that's how they hook you on gambling with this. Little endorphin rush. I'm not into Kino. I'm not into Kino. I just learned how to play Kino because my friends, when we went to Boston, they got a Kino, and I was like, "What the hell even is that?" And they were like, "Look at the TV. That my numbers, the numbers we picked." And I was like, "Numbers are numbers." I don't like gambling. I don't gamble. Too much. Um, but yeah, so I mentioned that me and Nick watched the Nickelodeon coverage. Um, and let me just read That's some of SpongeBob, my... That's with SpongeBob, right? Yeah. That was, yeah. But did you know that it was actually the voice of SpongeBob and Patrick, like, live, like, commentating oh, on it? the two guys? Yeah, I saw, like, a oh, TikTok of behind the scenes, and they were, like, all, like, dressed up behind, like, a green screen and everything. But some of my favorite puns was Oprah Finfrey. She was on the crowd. Oh, I get it. Oprah Finfrey. Yeah. Because everything had to be under the sea related. Yes, that's why Shrimp Uthi Chalamet. All right, now I get it. Clamuel L. Jackson. Oh, that's good. Clamuel. Or LaPron James and Finn Diesel. That one's good. Those are good, yeah. And then Herring Styles. Yeah. Not a Harry Styles fan. Herring Styles. The Super Bowl itself was an interesting game. I was hoping both teams would lose. Uh, sadly, that could not yeah, happen. I know. Um, Why the 49ers you want to No, lose? I was okay with the 49ers. It, yeah, it would have just... been fine. I, I do not. Not so loud. So, <laughs> well, I do have mild, mild to moderate hearing loss. <laughs> and... We didn't even make merch with that. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's merch out there. Bridget had the idea of making podcast earrings. What would they look like? They would, would be, they be Pave like, Diamonds. Oh, God, yeah, Bridget. Okay, she can, she can fund that. I'm glad Bridget's listening. She's a fan, apparently. Put that down. I'm, fi- I'm giving him the finger. Put that finger down. Okay, come on. I have places to be. I know you do, and it's almost a uh, bewitching hour for you to depart for work. The Super Bowl, yeah, whatever. I mean, it doesn't impact Viva. us. We just, you know, didn't go anywhere. We just the stayed at home. The after party looked fun. I think we made chicken meatloaf. Ew, yeah, that was dry. It wasn't dry. I thought it was was dry. It was fine. So I think that was the excitement. Elaine and I sitting home eating chicken meatloaf. How do we get an invite to the after party? Well, we know people, but we just don't have access. Do we know people who knew Tom Brady and flew on the jet? Yes, we do. We do. But anyway, um, that's not helpful. We're also related to people who knew John Lennon. So we'll that talk. doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't mean anything to you, but for people of my generation let and it older. Be, let it be. Well, that was Paul who was singing that. But we do know people who knew John Wait, Lennon and the... Yoko Ono. It's oh, yeah. How pews. did they know Yoko? What? Oh, they did like some Lamaze class together or something. Yes. We're, we're talking about uh, my aunt and uncle, Rabbi Allen and Rabbi Jan. They took uh, the Lamaze class with Elizabeth Bing, who was the nurse practitioner that brought Lamaze to the United States. And they took it at uh, an apartment that she had in New York City. You definitely need to have Aunt Jan on your podcast, I should. by the way. And she could tell the story. And she mm-hmm. could tell stories about John and Yoko. Because well, just she's so interesting. She went back to school when she was like 70 years old. 69, I think she started. She went back to rabbinical school. Work-life balance, your ass. That's perfect. That's perfect for your podcast. And she anyway, became go an on. ordained rabbi during the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, my God. This. Oh, before before we exit, Flavor Flav was a I guest. Like, but I cannot lie. You the, others, the, isn't that I, Sir mix That is. I got that totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Okay. Or is he, I'm on a boat, mother. No, no, Don't you no. ever forget. But No, that was said, T-Pain. Oh, he said that. Yeah, T- you're T-Pain. I am T-Pain. Yeah. It, and I'm a pain. Yeah, so that's why I um, said that. <laughs> okay. He said Flavor Flav, the way it's spelled, yeah. F-L-A-V-O-R-F-L-A-V. It can be either Flav or Flav, or it can be Flav or Flav. So it's not necessarily... It can be Flavor Flav. Flav it could be or it Flav, Flav or Flav, Flav or, or Flavor Flav. Flav. Yeah, exactly. Like... Florida, Florida, which could be Florida. They're really close friends. He was talking about. He says every single. It must be the FL Club, Flavor in Florida. True, because he said that when like Florida comes to perform in Las Vegas, he'll perform with them sometimes or occasionally. I was listening to him on the podcast. He said he's gambled and he's won some and he's lost some. That's the story with gambling: you win some, you lose some, but you lose more than you win. It's always nice when you do win. It is, but it's. Too stressful for me. I work for you. Too, I work too hard. I would much rather. Yeah, I don't want to blow your money on that. You're hard. Well, you're never money. blowing my money on that. I blow mom's money. On you're never blowing mom's money on that. I know. You, I did on the cruise. Yeah, because we didn't have any cash with you. But and that's you have, how you do it, people. No. Always ask the old people for cash. They always cash is king. They say they always have it. Always yeah. ask when it's dark outside too, so you can be like, "I don't want to go to the ATM. It's dark outside." Yeah, but we have a we we have a workaround there. You just sell me the money. This is for when I need to go to the dispensary, guys. Yeah, because because uh, mom and dad do not pay for the dispensary trips. There's, the sun must have been hidden behind a cloud well, because now it's getting dark, and it's the middle of the day. On that note, peace out and peace out. And don't forget, we post an episode every Tuesday night. See you next Tuesday. Thanks for listening to Two Peas, Same Pod, hosted by Eric and Tova Weinstein. Please subscribe and join us next time as we continue to share humorous anecdotes, funny mishaps, and comical observations from our own lives. Two Peas, Same Pod is produced by 1253 Studios, bringing always humorous and sometimes thought-provoking conversations to you through your favorite podcasting sites. Creative Content and Marketing Director, Tova Weinstein. Executive Producer and Chief Editor, Eric Weinstein. Music by MBB. Find his work on YouTube by searching for MBB Music or at mbbmusic.com. Special thanks for the intro, outro, and trailer voiceover to Jordan Rich, 
of CBS Boston Radio and Chart Productions, providing audio and voiceover recording and production, as well as podcast production and support. Visit Jordan at chartproductions.com. Funding for Two Piece and Pod is provided by the Law Office of Eric Weinstein and listeners like you. Please consider subscribing and supporting this podcast. Until we meet again, this was Two Peas, Same Pod, a 1253 Studios production.